Are there any general trends in feline health that you're noticing these days? I think one that I've been very excited to see recently is that we are focusing a lot more on treating feline pain. Mm. Um, and that has been a really long time coming. Cats have been really difficult to treat for pain for mm -hmm. many years because, first of all, they're good at hiding it. Mm -hmm. And second of all, most of the standard treatments don't work really well on them. Like opioids, for example. Cats can have really strange reactions to them. They can get hyper. They can get really high fevers. Um, and, you know, that's really different than, say, humans or dogs. Um, another big category that we use for pain, maybe if you have a dog, they take Rimadyl for their arthritis or something like that. That's a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug. Um, and we can use that in cats. There's one that's specifically made for cats, but it's something that we use in, in, in ca with caution in cats because cats, you know, one thing we see a good deal of is kidney disease and NSAIDs can be hard on the kidneys. And, and plus, if you've ever tried to give a cat a pill, um, that is not easy. And giving it every single day, you better have the nicest kitty in the world because <laughs> as, as a veterinarian with 20 plus years experience, I would not want to be in, in your shoes. I mean, it can't be said enough that preventative care is is really the way to go, right? Um, you know, we're we're kind of doing this podcast because our kitties are not going to the vet as much as our canine friends, and I think we're really missing out on opportunities to give them a healthier, longer life. Things like physical exams, lab work, that lets us find diseases earlier and lets us intervene earlier, and that always works better. <laughs>